Hello, Jim McGuire from EntraTech Incorporated. I'm the founder of EntraTech. We've been in business for over 20 years as an advanced material science products company um, that is basic in chemistry. Because we're basic in chemistry, we've been able to create solutions to solve difficult, challenging products in a multitude of industries, from healthcare to electronics to the industrial space. I'm here today to speak about one of the technologies we develop industrially we're really excited about, and that's our Aero Sustainable Paint Technology. Aero was originally developed as a replacement for spray paint on the mandatory markings for Boeing for the Boeing Dreamliner. Um, really cool opportunity for us, a really tough technical challenge. Through that process, it was pretty obvious that the adoption cycle in commercial aviation is measured in decades and we knew we had a really cool technology. What we didn't know was, you know, brand new tech, we really didn't know how good it was or what we didn't know. So we deployed, we began deploying the technology in motorsports. And fast forward today, most of the top teams in the world utilize Aero. Uh, for example, at the last sports car race, IMSA race at Watkins Glen, of the top three classes, 78% of the podium finishers had Aero on their vehicles and we're indistinguishable from spray paint because we are paint, we're just paint in film form. 2013, we began the arduous task of, of real, real life testing and laboratory testing to OEM paint specs. And in 2016, we were ready to begin talking to OEMs, which we have globally. And we were fortunate enough in 2019 to go live with the, with the relaunch of the Defender for Land Rover, which is one of the most anticipated new car launches in a long time and one of the coolest vehicles um, any of us has ever seen. If you, you know, so we're pretty proud of that success standpoint. And in the last couple of years, we've also been putting a lot of energy into the marine industry because if you've ever spent time at a boat show, you'll notice that practically every hull is white. And the people that have the boats with white hulls don't typically have white cars. So there's a great market for us. We have a great value proposition with the performance of our product and really excited about that. So Aero was originally conceived, again, to replace spray paint. Our chemistry at our company, we're basic in urethane chemistry, epoxy chemistry, acrylate chemistry. We were able to create new polymer structures in a film form that replicate the structures of paint and it looks like paint except the major differentiator is that there's no spray gun involved in our processing or yours and therefore when you apply Aero there's it's virtually zero CO2. So Aero sustainable material technology, Aero paint film, uh, the performance attributes are pretty important. Number one, we're, we, we do meet OEM paint specifications. We exceed specifications for durability. We're much lighter weight um, in, in motorsports, we've proven that we've been up to 80% lighter than spray. Because in many cases as well, you do not have to do the rigorous prep steps of different layers on a base composite structure with Aero. And that light weighting is very important in a, in, a, in a race car where they're chasing grams and also important in a BEV vehicle as well. So this, the sustainability piece of this, it's pretty obvious if you don't have a paint line in your operation that your factory, um, you know, opportunity to achieve zero, zero CO2 is pretty, is pretty straightforward. Uh, what is more important, well also important, is the total life cycle of the product. And with Aero, we have proprietary chemistry that eliminates most of the VOC used in typical film manufacturing processes. So the cost structure of Aero, the total cost of ownership of Aero is less than spray applied paint. You have to take into account the lack of the capex for the paint line, the speed of the process compared to paint. There's significant, significant other supply chain opportunities you have um, with Aero, especially going forward into more of the composite based vehicles. So I said we significantly reduce VOC one of our most significant inventions at EntroTech was what we call in-situ polymerization, web polymerization. And this is a way where we actually create the urethane film in situ as a web of material. So you, react, you, know, you basically are reacting and creating the film without a chemical reactor, a solvent-based chemical reactor, no solvent stripping, 
and you're achieving at the end of this a very durable, very tough, highly cross-linked urethane film. This is a great um, example of the process. It's just a very simple process. That's where, you know, I think it's a very elegant solution to creating film. Our initial chemistry inputs, the solutions A and B, are pretty complex chemistry there that we have patents on. But when we combine those together and coat those in a, in a coating head, not a spray, but in a roll-to-roll -roll coating process, and then expose it to, um, inf you know, to UV light and quite simply sunlight, we, we basically mimic the, the, the wavelength of the sunlight. It's a very inexpensive, low energy process. And that, that initiates the chemical reaction that happens quite rapidly. And at the end of the process line, you're rolling up a roll of essentially pigmented polyurethane film that's ready to go to the next. There's no VOCs, there's no high energy ovens, there's no thermal oxidizers, there's no EPA. And so it's a very, very cool process for creating a film technology. And we can always also do this with the adhesive chemistry. So again, it is a sustainable manufacturing process. So as ESG investors are most, most focused on total life cycle analysis uh, for any technology that's being adopted. And the fact that we're not doing traditional film manufacturing practices of high temperature ovens, solvents, solvent polymerizations, really gives us a leg up in that life cycle analysis equation. So the layers of arrow, you know, when we, you know, we, we've remarked from day one when we've done partial coverage of race cars to partial coverage of production cars, that, you know, we, we, we point to the arrow and say, man, that looks just like paint. Well, it is paint. You know, we, we make it, we layer it the same way as paint. We have a base coat, we have a clear coat. Each layer can be multi-layer. So if you're doing three-stage paints, four-stage paints, um, that's pretty straightforward to, for us in our processing to do multi-layers to achieve uh, four-stage and three-stage paint colors quite easily and quite consistently compared to the spray process. And then on the, on the substrate side, we can go directly on E-coat. You, know, you know, in many cases, we could probably go on the base metal, but we know the E-coat process also um, is used for curing your sealants um, and other things. Uh, in, 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 the, in the build of your car. So I'm not gonna go through this, the IP standpoint, you know, line by line by line, but you can take a look at this, this slide and look a little deeper at what we're doing. Obviously, I talked about the web polymerized chemistry, which is very cool, creates a defect-free product that we have patented, that's very cool. But some of the other areas that have been really neat is the fact that we've been able to conceal antenna, planar array antennas in our paint film where they were imperceptible to anyone walking around the vehicle. Um, and think about the same, the same uh, idea can be applied to various planar sensors. So you don't have something attached to the car, it's part of the paint film itself. With the urethane structure, which is an elastomer, multi-layer, we achieve the color, the, the distinctness of image that everybody wants. But what really can set us apart, you know, A, the durability, but the fact that we're also self-healing to micro-scratch. So on a typical scrub wash um, OEM test where you might do 40 cycles, um, we're essentially at 90% or better um, gloss retention after recovery. Um, the traditional paints might lose 60% of their gloss, they might only have 40%, some might have 30 And from a owner experience, uh, when you've had a vehicle, especially uh, film to look at is our piano black that we've deployed on contrast roofs. Uh, it's, it's hard to get your mind around that there's no swirl marks. Or it's hard to get your mind around is that you go to the cheap gas station car wash and you have scratches in it and then an hour later they're gone. You know, so that's a, a real great user attribute for our product. So the weathering characteristics. Initially after validating our tech in motorsports we started the initial testing in Florida and Arizona that we all use on paint and after three years it was pretty obvious we had us we were equal to or had a significant advantage but if you go back to our first live experimentation the it's really a horizontal surface the downside the, the Achilles heel of previous film technologies is based on horizontal performance uh, whether it's a water spot gloss degradation cracking 
In 2013, we did an experiment uh, based on horizontal weathering, where we actually did a contrast roof on a Range Rover Autobiography and parked it that never, never saw one day in a garage in five years in Marin County, California, which has sun 95% of the time, direct sunlight. And then this goes through, this vehicle went through the uh, commercial car washes, no degradation in gloss, no degradation in appearance, no color fade whatsoever. What's really cool is that same vehicle, because my family and I re re relocated to South Florida, has now spent an additional three years in direct sunlight in South Florida. And again, no degradation in, perform or in, in, in appearance, in gloss, still, still self-healing to micro scratch, still goes through the cheap car wash and looks just as good as it did the day we put it on. So again, I'm not, we don't need to go through these line by line on this slide, but as if you look, this is basically a good summary of chemical resistance, environmental resistance, um, self-healing characteristics, and all of this was based on OEM spec testing. So this is pretty key here, removability. You know, I know that all of you say paint is permanent. Paint is permanent until you have to get it off. So there's ways to get paint off. You can use solvent stripper, you can grind it off. Well, one of the key um, challenges with the Boeing, um, you, know, you know, basically paint replacement film was the fact that they needed a product that was removable from composite structure specifically. Because I mean, how are you gonna repaint a sprayed Dreamliner? It's not, it's not going to be easy for them. But we developed a very neat um, you know, structure that you can remove. We have ways to remove it. We have ways to enhance the removability with steam. But the fact is you can remove it cleanly without residue um, and it's still very high adhesion. So it's permanent, yet it's permanently removable. Now where that's really important, fast forward to the future when, er when everybody's talking about, you know, sustainability with recyclability of a vehicle. Um, imagine if you're, imagine how easy it is to remove the paint, which itself is then recyclable from the substrate, which now is recyclable on its own. So I think that's a very key advantage going forward. So this is a great video I'll let run that shows kind of the fun little tricks that we do. They're, I'll call them, they're not tricks, they're magic tricks, <laughs> where you have a waveform panel, which on one side of it is spray, one side of it is arrow, and in one test we'll micro scratch it with a brass brush, and you'll see my guys make those disappear, but they don't disappear on the spray, or on the satin finish, which is really cool. You can wax our satin finish and you won't change the gloss. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's insane. It's really cool. And then lastly, our stone chip resistance, which is massive compared to spray applied paint.
another area which is really amazing is our resistance to sand erosion. Now, if you look at the panel on the upper left, that's a standard uh, base coat, clear coat system. We go through in two and a half seconds. If you look on the bottom right, the 300 product, that's over 10 minutes. Now, um, as an example of the importance of that on the Corvette factory race team, the Pratt Miller uh, program, the leading material on the front of the Corvette um, is our 350 product, 350 GSM product. And it can, it's also on the high wear areas of the rear quarters. The rest of it is a 180 gram product. So you can optimize the weight of the product and the durability features you're looking for. Um, and we've gone, we have gone as low for Formula One teams as 50 grams per square meter um, as a paint film going directly on carbon fiber, so no prep. Um, and so we haven't issued patent on that for, for that sort of optimization. And I think that's very important for BEV going into the future as well. So in the next couple slides, obviously everybody's working on autonomous, semi-autonomous. And there's a lot of current concerns about transparency of decorative coatings. And in our team, our, 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 in our team of experts that work with Aero, we have some of the smartest RF guys on the planet Earth. They do work for us, they do work for the defense, United States Defense. And they've done, they do all our baseline testing. So they've validated our black and our clear, and, you know, independently and, and done a sweep of all the frequencies that they can test for. And essentially we're transparent to all of these. Obviously if we do a, you know, we couldn't do a, basically a liquid metal product that had a metal layer in it, because that's obviously not gonna work for you. But they're, uh, it, you know, you're safe to go over many of the sensors that have been or will be used in the future. So this is really a good diagram of the way that, you know, the, basically this is a simplified diagram of the painting process, as you know, for a production facility. And, you know, for some of you startups that have never been in the automotive business, understand that these facilities can cost more than a half a billion dollars. They use so much energy, they require their own uh, power plant. These are massive, massive, complex, uh, you know, paint lines. And you know it's uh, it's amazing feat to see it done, uh, but it's also extremely high CO2. Um, you know, you know the output of it is extremely high in CO2. There's ways to integrate aero into the vehicle. One, you can go directly on the paint that you've done, the finished car. So, for example, a contrast roof. In the time it takes you to mask and bag, you can actually apply aero um, in less time, and, and in many cases, in less time and you can go straight to build. So we think that's obviously very important. Um, in certain areas, we may wanna go on a prime surface, we can do that. In others, we wanna go on the e-coat, you know, we can do that. So we cut many steps out of the process in an existing paint operation. So obviously, we need to automate the processing of this for high volume and ultra high volume. So we've partnered with Fusei in Japan, who's been working on the application of paint film not ours obviously, but for interior trim components for several years with the, with the Japanese automotive manufacturers. So they have a great background. They've now developed equipment, um, you know, to do full body panels in a hit. They actually have uh, developed one machine that is taking a, not a B surface film and applying it to a car that's been driven into the vacuum former. So, so they have a lot of really cool capability and we're pretty far along with them with developing the equipment to do body panels, hoods, et cetera. Um, you know, and we're and even looking at contrast roof, if that's something that makes sense as well. But this is an example of a video. You watch the video and you look at the image on the top on the monitor and it shows a car speed shape actually being done in one hit.
They've been really excited working with us because obviously I'm sure other people trying to get in the paint film business has spoken to them, but um, our product works, it looks great, and they're very proud to show us off at their trade shows in Japan. And in fact, with you know Honda, um, they actually asked us if it was okay if they invited Honda engineers in Japan to watch us, my team over there, go through their development trials and said, absolutely, you know, we want to we want to collaborate with everyone. So this is a really cool opportunity for the for trick carbon fiber parts. We have a clear technology, extremely robust. Um, it goes you can, if you have a proper carbon substrate, you go directly over it, and we will outperform the current spray coating that's used now, which as most of you know is incredibly expensive and pretty much I think has one supplier globally. We're really proud of this. This is the world's first aero paint facility in an OEM's factory. This happens to be in Nitra, Slovakia, and that's where we're doing the Land Rover Defenders right now. Very exciting for us. With the future of autonomous transportation, multiple new startups in the BEV space, you know, one of the areas of opportunity we have is to pre-laminate the arrow to ABS, thermoform that into a sheet or some other, some other compound, and use that and basically build a shell and put the body panels on. Lightweight, um, it'll look great, it'll be very durable. And at the end of the life cycle of the product, you can strip off the arrow from the ABS and they can each go their, their own way for recyclability. So the total life cycle of the paint in the car is uh, very good from a sustainability perspective. So the arrow repair maintenance process. So we've got, we've got multiple pathways. We've got two different pathways of repairing a vehicle uh, for collision damage refinish. Number one is to replace the film on a panel. So for example, on a typical hood of a car, we can strip off a damaged aero film and replace it in, in not in a paint booth, but a relatively clean area in less than uh, 40 minutes. On the slide, there's a picture of the Ferrari 458 quarter panel on a race car that we repainted in 49 minutes start to finish going directly on the e-coat. So that's a great advantage of Aero is the speed of it and the fact you don't need a paint booth and the fact that you're not dumping huge quantities of VOCs into the globe because traditionally, globally, the refinished market, very little of the emissions are actually controlled. So that's a big deal to us to be able to make an improvement there. The second pathway you have on Aero is for spot repair is to do traditional uh, body shop techniques. We do have a pending patent and a procedure on how to do that, but, but this allows a body, body shop to be able to do a spot repair or maybe in a remote location in the world, it'd be easier you know, to, to, to have somebody do a traditional method than it would be to apply film. So in terms of maintaining Aero, remember what I said earlier, it looks like paint because it is paint, it is paint. It's nothing more than paint, just, you know, we cut out the spray gun guy. So, if, and we make it a roll-to-roll -roll process very efficiently. So you treat it just like paint. You wax it, you detail it, you polish it, however you go through your car wash. But the fact that it's self-healing means you can do, you know, you can go to a scrub car wash and there's going to be no, zero damage to the appearance of your vehicle. In fact, all the testing we've done on any of our vehicles um, they traditionally go through once a week or twice a week, you know, at most, through the lowest cost scrub car wash at the local filling station. And there's no damage to the gloss or any, any change in the, the surface of our satin finish arrow. Well, thank you for letting me go through my PowerPoint and explain to you the Aero Sustainable Material Tech, what it can do for you. I think the, uh, one of the biggest messages I want to get across is this is not tomorrow, this is today. This is technology that's been developed, validated, and commercialized over a decade and can be deployed today to lower the CO2 output of your manufacturing facilities and greatly help you achieve the goal, be on the path to achieve the goal of zero CO2 by 2050 or sooner. Thank you very much.